This is KGW News at Sunrise. Fully vaxxed? Well, you can lose the mask. The CDC's new ruling says fully vaccinated people don't need masks in most situations. We'll look at some of the exceptions and how Oregon and Washington are handling this change. Plastic clamshell containers are used so much now and you can't recycle them. So they go in the trash and head to the landfill and they don't break down for decades. Now a local startup recycling company says it's figured out a way to reuse them. And we are heading into the weekend with another edition of Feel Good Friday. So here's the deal. Just let us know the best thing that happened to you this week because we already have some great responses from our viewers, but we'd love to have some more. We're going to share as many of these as we can get to throughout the course of the morning. Love it. Good Friday morning, everybody. Thanks for waking up early with us. I'm telling you, what a good Friday includes, Rod, is lots of sunshine. Yeah, uh, well, not that we're not used to that, right? Here we go again with temperatures back up to about 80 this afternoon. We're starting you off mainly in the 50s. We have some cloudiness up top, but that's moving off to the east. It's uh, 56 in Salem right now, so this will become a perfectly clear afternoon. 55 currently, 68 at noon. There's that high right back up to about 80 degrees. All right, Rod, we'll check in with you soon. Thank you. Well, it is a big headline. It's not going to mean a lot of change, though, right away. For many, though, it does mark a big turning point in the pandemic. The CDC now recommending it's safe to not wear your mask outdoors or at gatherings indoors. If, and this is a big if, if you and everyone around you have been fully vaccinated. In the coming days, the Oregon Health Authority will be providing updated guidance for businesses, employers, and others to allow the option of lifting mask and physical distancing requirements after verifying vaccination status. So that last part of what Governor Brown said is important because we are far from everyone being vaccinated. The state will still require masks in some places and many companies can and will as well. Brian Clerkley joining us now this morning with some of those exceptions and with reaction. Good morning, Bryant. Good morning, Nina. And masks will still be required on public transportation in healthcare settings in some businesses like grocery stores. And some people were thrilled at the CDC's announcement. And some people say they're going to keep their masks on when they're out and about. And grocery stores like New Seasons, Fred Meyer and QFC will continue to require masks for now. A Fred Meyer spokesperson tells us they're offering employees $100 as an incentive to get vaccinated. Some fear people who aren't vaccinated will take advantage of the honor system and put more people at risk. For many, the biggest incentive is getting in getting the shot is not having to wear a mask, but others want to keep it on for now. I mean, that's that's good news, you know, for people who are vaccinated and stuff like that. I mean, I'm gonna still wear my mask just because, you know, I mean, I just found out about it. I don't really care. Uh, I'm aware. I know I got to wear a mask on the bus and stuff like that. So I think it's uh, much safer to have a mask until India and Brazil, uh, because there's variants and things can recirculate around. And Governor Brown says starting Thursday, the state of Oregon will adapt the CDC's guidelines. But for the remainder of the year, teachers and students will need to wear masks. And she also says that there's going to be a full review of this of uh, new mask recommendations coming soon. And the same in Washington. Governor Jay Inslee is reviewing that state's mask recommendations and social distancing. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Bryant. Bryant, we'll have more on this for us coming up in our six o'clock hour. Right now, though, we want to get to three more things to know about COVID this morning. Number one, moments after the CDC delivered its mask update, First Lady Jill Biden paid a visit to a vaccine center without a mask. Here's a look at that visit yesterday. This was in West Virginia. The First Lady has been visiting vaccine centers in hopes of helping people feel more comfortable about getting vaccinated. Number two, could getting two different COVID vaccines increase the chances of having short-term side effects? Oxford University gave a group of people over 50 years old both the AstraZeneca shot and the Pfizer shot. Side effects were reported more frequently by people in that group versus other people who had gotten just one type of vaccine. And number three, we've already heard about several vaccine incentives around the country, everything from a million dollar lottery to free food. And now baseball tickets apparently are being offered up as a way to get people vaccinated. About 150 fans in St. Louis received two free tickets to see the Cardinals play baseball after they got their shots. 
And those are three things to know about COVID this morning. Turning now to gun violence in Portland, where reports of shootings are becoming more frequent. And in a troubling statistic, the city now has 30 homicides this year. At this time last year, there were five. Relatives tell us 33-year-old Jalen Yoakum became Portland's 30th victim of gun violence on Wednesday. Police say the shooting happened around 5.30 in the evening near Northeast 118th and Sandy. Witnesses reported hearing close to a dozen shots. Then they say the shooter drove away. Yoakum is the stepson of Pastor Matt Hennessy, a longtime local advocate for young black men traumatized by gun violence. It's very difficult to be advocating and trying to bring awareness to and, pr and, pr and, you know, and prayerfully curtailment to, and then you find your own family uh, being in the midst of it as well. And it's not a club that I want anybody uh, to be joining. And no parent wants to bury their child. Oh. Hennessy says Yoakum, a father of two boys, was looking forward to starting a new job with the electricians union just next week. Police haven't released any information about suspects. There have been close to 350 shootings in Portland so far this year. In Washington, it is now illegal to openly carry a gun at protests or on the grounds of the state capitol. Governor Inslee signing that measure into law earlier this week. Law enforcement is required to give verbal warnings before issuing a citation or making an arrest in this law. Violating it would be labeled a gross misdemeanor. It doesn't change rules for those who have a concealed weapons permit. Gun rights advocates are planning to file a lawsuit to challenge the new law. All right, we're going to change gears here now, Brenda Braxton, and talk a little bit about recycling because a Portland startup has come up with a way to deal with one of the most annoying food option containers known to man. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the plastic clamshell container. Yeah, they are a problem. You can't put them in your curbside recycling, so we definitely need some kind of repurposing plan. Keely Chalmers takes us to Ridwell Recycling. They seem to be almost everywhere. Those plastic clamshells, they hold salads, berries, food to go. The problem, they can't go in our curbside recycling bins. In fact, right now, there are no curbside recycling programs anywhere in Oregon that will take plastic clamshells. You can see we have cookie containers. But that's about to change. Containers. It's been kind of immense how many people have been saving clamshells. In less than two weeks, Portland Recycling Service Ridwell will launch its own plastic clamshell recycling program in Portland. We make it easy for our members to waste less. The company is partnering with Green Impact out of Texas to recycle the old clamshells into new ones. If it's clear, no dyes and crinkles, that's a number one plastic we can now recycle. So we're talking about your berry containers, your salad containers, even those like jars of peanut butter. Taylor Lowen is general manager of Bridwell Portland. Since it launched in the Rose City last December, the company has kept more than 150,000 pounds of hard to recycle trash out of the landfill. But it was those pesky plastic containers that people kept asking about. We had hundreds of members write in asking about clamshells, and that really put the pressure on us to figure out a good solution. Of course, for Ridwell to come pick up your hard to recycle items, you do have to be a member. Memberships start at $12 a month. You'll get this bin and separate recycling bags for each item, and then you'll get the peace of mind. You're doing something good for the planet. So we're really happy to bring a solution to Oregonians. Keely Chalmers, KGW News. All right, before we get to Rod's forecast, let's take a live look right now. This is the Clark County Fairgrounds in Ridgefield, where Dozer Day is coming back this weekend. And we've got the uh, excavator in action as we speak this morning. Eric Patterson is there live for us. So here's the deal with Dozer Day. It's been around for like 16 years now in Vancouver and in Clark County. But they're going to do it a little differently this year because of COVID. It's a drive through only event. So in the past, kids have had a great time actually getting into these vehicles, these heavy pieces of construction equipment equipment and operating the controls at Dozer Day. Not this year. They plan on bringing that back next year, but this year it's going to be a drive through only event where they're saying basically it'll feel like your car is going through a live construction zone. You have to pay in advance. They will not be selling tickets on site. So it's Saturday and it's Sunday and to buy those tickets for the car load, you have to go to 
this website, listen up, it is vancouver.dozerday.org. Vancouver.dozerday.org, Rod Hill. Those are the Dozer Day details. Thank you, Mr. Dozer Day. You've been doing that live shot, I mean, back in so-called normal times. Drew's been out there for years and years and years and years. Hi, Nina. Hi. Did you like to say anything to me? Nope. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure, right? All right, I, I want to take in a closer look, and you can see here we have this big batch of mid to high level clouds. It's working its way to the east, and the clearing line is just about ready to come into our backside. Future cast uh, today shows basically a clear sky afternoon with the clouds we have right now clearing out. Uh, I'm talking about the west side of our state. The coast should get some sun as well. But notice at 1 o'clock this afternoon, see the green? That's possible showers and even thunderstorms firing along the Cascades. Uh, even shows a shower up around the Dalles this afternoon. And there's a spotty shower thunderstorm chance across central and eastern Oregon where those clouds will kind of hang out during the day. Here are the current numbers. Uh, right now, everybody's dry, 54 over in Bend. Uh, nobody's chilly. I mean, it's 45 in Baker City. It's 63 out in the Dalles. Good morning again to you folks. It's a Friday, and if you're going to find yourself at the coast, I do expect afternoon sun here. Uh, as story gets up to about 60, there will be a chilly northwest breeze bouncing 10 to 25 miles per hour. And a reminder, if you're going to be recreating up in the Cascades, temperatures in the 60s in that afternoon. Uh, thunderstorm chance. Portland 80, 82, 82. The weekend looks fabulous. And then we still have that chance of rain, which looks likely coming in on Tuesday, which we need, we need, we need, we need. That's my forecast. Double fantastic then. A <laughs> little bit of everything for anyone. Thank you, sir. You guys know conversations about mental health are never, ever easy, especially with kids. Coming up this morning on Sunrise, details about a program helping connect with and better understand their emotions. Plus, summer is on the way and people want to get in shape. But before you sign up for a weight loss plan, you may want to reconsider the cost. Hey, we started the hour by mentioning it's another Feel Good Friday here in the Sunrise Show, so let's play the game, shall we? We asked, what's the best thing that happened to you this week? And we have viewers already chiming in this morning, starting with Cindy Cooper. Cindy says, we planted our garden. We're going to have lots of veggies to share with everyone now. And then we got this picture from a viewer named Dina. Dina says, my new baby. Sleeping in my arms is the best thing that happened to me this week. That is a, uh, a baby cat, also known as a kitten. <laughs> the kitten making a Sunrise Show appearance. Keep sending us the best thing that happened to you this week, and we'll keep sharing them right here on the show.
Some companies are scoring big as we see an end to the coronavirus pandemic on the horizon. And those big winners include diet companies. Let's connect the dots. During the COVID quarantine, some of us used the time to hop on Pelotons or dust off that home gym equipment. Meanwhile, the rest of us turned to comfort food and extra alcohol. A small study found that people who were sheltering in place gained more than half a pound every 10 days. Now all those sweats wearing Netflix watchers are realizing it's time to put on real pants again. And when that doesn't go well, they're turning to diet plans. So that means programs like Noom, which does customized health plans starting at $59 a month. And Weight Watchers, now known as WW International, are seeing a big boom in business. Companies that do meal replacement plans are seeing a shortage of their most popular foods. That means out-of-stock snacks are going for big bucks on eBay. Experts warn most of these diets can be beneficial just in the short term. If you want to keep your pandemic pounds off for the long term, you have to make realistic changes to your diet and lifestyle. And that means retraining how you think about food and hunger, which is a longer commitment than quick fix diets, making the Battle of the Bulge more like a 100 year war. And that's connecting the dots. Now to some of the national headlines in your morning rush. Rescue efforts are underway after an overnight explosion at an Oklahoma dam trapped two workers. Contractors were drilling at the car dam when the blast happened. Only one of the three men involved made it out. Authorities say they've made contact with the other two who are trapped 80 feet from the top of the dam. Officials don't know how long it will take to free them. Fuel is flowing again through the Colonial Pipeline and new information is coming out about the cyber attack that shut it down. The company reportedly paid $5 million to the Russian hackers who took control of the pipeline. Colonial says it paid the ransom in cryptocurrency last Friday. And we have an update on the Houston Tiger. Everybody was talking about this earlier this week. The guy who had that tiger as a pet will appear in court today. Victor Cuevas is charged with evading arrest. The nine month old cub is still missing this morning. Police say Cuevas hasn't told them where he took it. And finally, how does this sound? A beer spa. It's in Belgium, it's called the Good Beer Spa, and hmm. it features jacuzzis with hops and barley mixed into the water. Yeah, guests may be tempted to drink it. Don't do it though. There are taps right next to those tubs so you can pour yourself a cold one. And those are some of your Friday headlines. Hmm, they have okay. something like that in Sisters actually, locally. Interesting. Yes. All right. We're going to take a moment to talk about mental health and kids because we all know it has been a really tough year for so many and parents are often looking for ways to help. So there's this mom in Newburgh who found help for her daughter through a Providence program that connects kids with other kids. John Goodwin explains. I'm a lot more hopeful today than I was a year ago. It was a really scary time. For parents like Bonnie Allison, last year it felt like the spinning would never stop. Her 11-year-old daughter, Peyton, felt it too. Any parent who sees their child struggling with depression, it affects <laughs> you too, emotionally and physically. She's incredibly emotionally intuitive. She's also spunky and sarcastic, but still a kid. Peyton deals with emotional trauma, and Bonnie didn't know where to turn. Her school counselor had called me and talked to me about it because she had said something at school, and we were wanting to get her help, and so he set her up with Renee. I work for Providence as part of the Bob team. Bob stands for Better Outcomes Through Bridges. The Providence program helps at-risk people find support. Renee Crank is a student outreach specialist. So I would come into the school once a week and they would either pull her out of class or we would have lunch together and we just talked about whatever she wanted to talk about. After a little while and I got to know her more and she got to know me more, we started um, creating this bond where we could trust each other a lot more. Bonnie, a single mom of two, has seen an amazing change in Peyton. She's actually enjoying being here now. She's not feeling like so stressed out and down on herself. There's, I've seen a dramatic change in the last year with her. Bob is open to anyone by referral. Renee has about 15 clients, half of which are kids. The support goes beyond the emotional. 
My program has people who want to give us <laughs> gift cards and various items, so I've been able to provide them with food gift cards, gas gift cards. There is no harm in asking. And it's, I don't think it should be for just single parents. It can be for anyone, especially during this pandemic. Like, reach out and ask for help. In Newburgh, John Goodwin, KGW News. Definitely glad to see John cover that story, Rod, in Newburgh. Uh, we're also focused on the weekend this morning because it has arrived. Now we yes. just need that weather forecast. Yes, uh, basically we stay warm and for the most part sunny. We do have some clouds out there this morning. This is uh, down in Yamhill County, Stoller Family Vineyards to stay. Are the clouds solid? And the answer is... Well, 55 out there. And the answer is, here's the Domain Serene uh, camera out in the Dundee Hills. So both cameras from Yamhill County, one's cloudy, one is pretty sunny, actually, once that sun pops up. That's coming uh, in the next half hour. Here's uh, Bailey, our KGW dog of the day, a real cute puppy. Look at that. Use that hashtag. You post them on your own social media channels. We'll find them and put them on our show. So we have cloudiness to begin around the area. That moves on. I think this afternoon we get back to that deep blue sky and the coast will clear out today as well. Uh, Tillamook 60 back up to around 80 in Portland, Salem. These are 4 p.m. temperatures. There is that chance. Don't forget of a scattered or an isolated thunderstorm popping later today along the Cascades, mainly south of Mount Hood. But our future cast model actually shows a shower around the Dallas too. And that chance of a spotty thunderstorm out east where you folks will have cloudiness throughout the day, broken cloudiness uh, and that chance of a thunderstorm. Weekend though looks great. Sunny, basically 80 or warmer through Sunday. Monday stays dry. That rain comes in on Tuesday. If it doesn't rain Tuesday, I'm going to be incredibly bored. All right, back to you. <laughs> it's an easy forecast now. Yeah, Rod, thank you. Well, the classic Oregon Trail computer game is getting revamped to focus more on representation of Native Americans. We're going to look at the changes developers are making in nerd news right after the break.